Welcome to the Catbird Quilts. I'm Kathy Martin. In today's video, I want to tell you the story of the Copa Way quilt by Cotton and Joy. And let me tell you, this one was a doozy. And I learned a lot. So stay with me. This quilt came about because I was making a baby quilt for my friend and I had a very hard time landing on a colorway and on a quilt pattern. And I had seen the couple way quilt by Cotton and Joy on Instagram, of course, chief place of inspiration for quilt patterns. And I loved it. Now in the original pattern, she does a two tone, the flowers are two tones. So for example, this would be one panel of this and one panel of this in each flower. And I loved it. I thought it was so beautiful. Every colorway that I saw it in, I loved. And I thought, oh, and it's kind of sweet in a way. And I thought it would make a really great baby quilt. So gathered a lot of fabrics, um, some of them thrifted men's shirts. So this terracotta is a men's shirt. This um, peachy gray with orange ginkgo leaves was a impulse buy, an online impulse buy, and I loved it. The pale pink was from my local quilt store, and the green was a linen knit shirt, which more on that later from the thrift store. Okay, and side note, I'm fighting a cold and I'm having the worst tickle in my nose and I'm doing a ton of sniffing. So apologies for that. And if there's a weird break, it's probably because I've had to blow my nose. <laughs> TMI. But anyway, so I loved the pattern and thought it was so beautiful. Bought the pattern, had the fabrics that I was auditioning for the two different baby quilts. And this one has curves, you may have noticed, which I had never done before in quilting and had never done that severe of a curve in sewing at all. So I did a test block and I managed it with little difficulty. And I was like, all right, here we go. So I used this, sorry, I saw this dark thread and I could not pass it up. So I did the first little section right here and it came out pretty well. And so I did another one and I thought, ah, oh, this is going to be great. And I cut all the pale pink fabric and I cut the background fabric and got into it. And the colorist, who is my younger daughter, really did not like the colorway. And we had some boisterous conversations about it. She really didn't like it. She didn't like the pale pink. Um, this middle color was kind of challenging to work with because there's a lot of gray in it, surprisingly. And so I had done the way the pattern called for, which is a solid and then, you know, a opposing different color. And I had it all mixed up and she just was basically thumbs downing <laughs> a lot of it. And in the meantime, I was also auditioning another quilt pattern with similar, but not exactly the same fabrics. And it ended up winning out. And so what I had was a sections of block. <laughs> so not even a whole block, like this side, this side, this side. And one afternoon on a whim, I was like, this is ridiculous. I just need to put them together all in one piece, sew it and call it a day. And I did. And it came together really well. And I actually really liked it. And I struggled with the, this green, green, gray. It has a lot of blue in it, linen knit. Um, and, you know, gosh, learning. <laughs> learning is my favorite. I also am, it's a good thing it's my favorite because I jump in with both feet sometimes without really thinking of the consequences. Knit on a curve 
is like asking for problems. And I did have them. I probably made way more of these than you see, just trying to make it work. And if you aren't familiar with working with knits versus working with quilted cottons, they have so much more stretch. And they, I, I mean, it's a knit. And in fact, most people, when they use knits, if they use knits of any kind in quilting, they will um, stabilize them with interfacing so that it stays structural. Did not do that, did not know, <laughs> know to do that. Um, and so I just kind of forged ahead because I'm, you know, they say brave or crazy. You could, that's debatable <laughs> which one of those I am. Um, I think I probably would have to own both. So I just, in an afternoon, came together great, um, even though I fought with the leaves, but I loved the color of the leaves and I had struggled to really find the right color that worked with these colors. I tried blue, I tried a more greeny green, it just seemed to clash. And so in the end, I was very satisfied with the color, which is why I threw caution to the wind and used a knit on an orange peel, still kind of blows my mind. And finally it came together. And then comes the, what do I do about the backing? And I had bought a very pale blue sheet from the thrift store. Maybe it was pillowcases. It may have been pillowcases. And it was not quite big enough to cover the whole back. Also through caution to the wind, that's all right. I'll just sew a border all the way around on the back, which I did. And it'll be fine. It'll be centered up in the back and it'll be lovely. And so I'm going to give you a little sneak peek there. So that's the pale blue. It's very thin. It's very soft. And I use some of the fabric from the front, put a border all the way around the edge. And then in the meantime, had found a really lovely plaid shirt that really had all the colors in it. It had the pale blue. It had that kind of terracotta clay I don't even know what color to call that and it had the pale pink it has a little bit of yellow in it and I thought oh I'll just make binding from this plaid shirt and then it occurred to me that if I wanted the binding to look the same all the way around that I would need to fussy cut the binding again this is like the caution to the wind, <laughs> throw caution to the wind, just was like, okay. So I laid the shirt out and I have a binding ruler that's two and a half inches and it's clear, of course, as most quilting rulers are. And so I laid it out and cut that first strip and folded it in half and folded it in half again to see if it was going to come out like I wanted and did that the whole expanse of the shirt until it had enough binding to go around the whole quilt, which I did. And it was not as hard as I thought, by the way. So just while we're talking about it, if you decide you want to do binding with a plaid shirt and you want it to look similar all the way around the whole quilt, you can do it. And it's not nearly as hard as you would think, really. You just have to fussy cut it. Um, if it were a very large quilt, you would be very stretched um, because I used a lot of that shirt because I had to find that repeating pattern, um, if that makes sense. So got the binding on. Well, actually, of course, that's at the end. But anyway, so I had it all together and I have a friend, childhood friend, who I found out is a long armor and he's in his learning process. He's been doing it for a little while, mostly his own quilts and is really in the place where he's wanting to build this into a business. And so I gave him both baby quilts, this one and the other one that ended up being the one that went to my friend. And the one that I decided I was going to give to Abby, I had a plan for. I kind of knew what I wanted and told him what I wanted and expected. And he was like, got it. And this one, because it was not intended for anyone and really was just a collection of test blocks <laughs> sewn together 
that I'm like, well, I hate to waste them. I mean, I've done all this work and all the fabrics invested in it. Let me just put it together, which I did. So I cursed him with the just do whatever. I don't need it anytime soon. So whenever you get it done, however you want to do it, knock yourself out. And let me just tell you, now that I have a little more experience asking long armors to do work for me, that is a horrible thing to do <laughs> to a person who is going to do creative work for you. And the reason that's horrible is because I gave him no direction at all, which is not fair. It's just not fair. It's like being a really bad graphic arts client. I didn't know what I wanted. And so I thought it didn't matter. But sometimes when you don't know what you want, you do, there are things that you do or don't want, but you just don't know. And I also told him, you know, get to it whenever, which actually was true. Whenever was fine. Uh, I also did not tell him that the backing was a square and had a border around it. And that if it was lined up perfectly, the square would be centered on the back of the quilt when it was done. Have since come to find out and all of you long armors out there, I'm sure you're probably sighing. I'm sighing on my own behalf. Did not understand how long arming worked. So I didn't realize that you have to pull the fabric up when you put it on the roller. There is no really centering fabric with a border on a quilt that you're long arming. I guess it's possible, but very, very difficult. And, and I didn't tell him, which is, oh my goodness, all of the mistakes. I feel like I made all of the mistakes as a long arm client on this quilt and bless his bones. He was a trooper about it. Um, and so I didn't tell him that. So he didn't know and off it went. And I'm going to stop right here and tell you that we almost did this very quilt story video back in October and called it quilt horror story. Um, and then we kind of banted around the idea of quilts when quilts go bad, <laughs> because it really, even from the beginning, the, the mixing and matching, trying to make the two-tone thing work, and then the very poor choice of fabric <laughs> or the leaves, and then the just kind of everything. It, it fought me the whole way. And so I turned it over to my friend, and then it fought him <laughs> the whole rest of the way. So come to find out the rest of the story, once it got to, into Kyle's hands, he had every problem under the sun, really in life, but also with his quilt. So his long arm machine broke in the middle of it, and it was doing some kind of jerky. There was a something with a, I don't know, actually, I don't know, but there was something with the machine and it was causing problems with the quilt. So he had to put it on hold until he could get the machine fixed. And when the guy who was the long arm machine fixer upper got, <laughs> got a hold of it, like the day or something crazy that he was going to work on the machine, had a heart attack, nearly died, poor man. And the shop where my friend was working out of flooded also while he was had taken on this and the other quilt his mother who is just the sweetest um and has dementia uh he had to go care for her because of travel plans and his sister wasn't able and anyway so he ended up being in the care caring for his mother who has dementia for weeks uh, which if any of you 
do that and have a loved one who has <laughs> Alzheimer's or dementia, that is a burden all of its own, like without also having a family and then a burgeoning long arm business. So he ran into every problem under the sun um, and then sent me some design. He was great. What do you think about this? What do you think about this? And I like that, like that. And so eventually we were able to get back together and he gave me the quilt and he was not satisfied with it. I could tell when he handed it to me and there were some, there were some beautiful, there are some beautiful design components to this quilt. And then there were a couple of things that I just didn't love. And as soon as I realized that I just didn't love them, so we're sitting across the table from each other and this quilt had fought him the whole time, fought me the whole time and then fought him the whole time. And we're looking at each other and there were some things he was disappointed with and there were some things I was disappointed with. And then we had to sit there and talk about it. So gave him the opportunity. He talked about some of the frustrations and some of the difficulties that he had run into with the quilt. Of course, I'm horrified on his behalf and realizing I was such a terrible long arm client. It's, it's not fair. You can't say, do whatever and then have feelings about the whatever that comes back to you. It's not fair. So he did not realize that the backing needed to be centered. And why, why would he? I, I, did, <laughs> I didn't tell him. And honestly, if I had been a better communicator and or known anything about long arming and I'm learning, when I told him, hey, I want this to be centered on the back, he would have been able to say, okay, so the way long arming works and you put it on the roller, that's not going to work. And so what happened is the back of the quilt, there was the huge block of border on one, on like, for example, the top, and then the blue went to almost the edge. So it was not only was it not centered, it was like a border on three sides, but not on the fourth. And I like a good symmetrical backing or a planned asymmetry. Um, and of course, I didn't know and he didn't know. So there's no one there's there's no one to blame and there is no blame. So do not hear me say this as criticism. This is a this was a learning process. This this quilt was like learning 101. And so I got the quilt. We talked about it. He was great. I was apologetic. Um, most of the problems, honestly, were from a lack of understanding and a lack of communication on my part. And I will 100% own that. Let's talk about what was so great. And what was so great is so great. And one of the things that he does so beautifully, he chose the perfect thread color for both front and back. And his stitching is so even and perfect. And it's the perfect tension, perfect stitch tension. The bottom doesn't come through the top. The top doesn't come through the bottom. It just looks beautiful. And we had talked about the top stitch color and he tried different things. And I really think that maybe where he most shines apart from some of this beautiful detail work that he did. It was called, I think it was called bone. It literally was the perfect color stitching. And the back is a, just a, a pale blue that is perfect for the back. And you can see that, especially in the leaves and this flower um, pattern that he did all around the what looked like tulip petals what he did in the what was originally here in the petals of the cup away flowers was a swirl and the swirls were actually great um but it never occurred to me that i might need to suggest that he outline the design features so the flower part and the leaves part, which he actually did do the leaves 
And what happened with the swirls when I got it home and washed it, as quilts are prone to do, it crinkled up so beautifully and it lost the shape of the flower. And so it was torn because now it's washed and done, had the binding on it. Binding came out gray. So I did trim the whole quilt down. Um, and thankfully there was extra border on either side and top and bottom. And so you can see what I did. I trimmed the white border on actually both edge sides. So the blue goes all the way to the binding, which is actually really lovely. And then I was able to trim the two ends enough that there was a fairly close border top and bottom. So that worked out great. Washed it. Um, and then had these beautiful flowers with really great spiral design that lost kind of the shape of the flower. And I sat on it for a while and thought about it and ultimately decided to pull out the spiral quilting. And it hurt my heart a little to do it because he had done such good work, but it wasn't exactly what I wanted. And so, and I say, I, I didn't actually. Paul volunteered, got out the good seam reaper, the metal one with the really sharp point on it that's engraved seam reaper. And just over the course of nights, as I was hand binding quilts, he would work on it. And we took the le the flower part apart. And then over more months, I came back and I mirrored in the quilting this beautiful leaf pattern that he had chosen. And so he did a, you know, just followed the lines of the leaf. And then I did that exact thing on the petals. So honestly, I feel like I honored his design choices in the flower and have ended up really, really loving it. The very tight, um, dense flowers around it to me make it so lovely and textural and it gives it, it's like a, like one is the foil to the other. The contrast between the smooth, plain leaves and petals and then all these beautiful flowers around. And then he did a really cool, um, almost like a spirograph. I don't know what this is. I'm sure long armors, if you know what this is called, I'm sure it's something. It's like a flower and diamonds and I don't know. Anyway, between the petals and it is in the end so, so, so pretty and such a great model of custom quilting. This was not edge to edge. This was not done by computer. It's very evident someone had artistic choices here. And I think that in the end, his design choices for the leaves in between the flowers and these beautiful flowers all around in vines enhance what would uh, in a, otherwise be a pretty plain quilt. Um, it's it's kind of plain. And so the plain, they're not tulips, they're cup away, but the plain tulip flower in contrast with the dense flowers all around it, I think in the end is has come out really beautiful. But boy, was it work getting here. It was work. And it was emotional work for he and I both because he, he didn't say, but he kind of had to say, you set me up. <laughs> and then he had, you know, life is not easy. And the things that happen in our lives impact our making. Uh, the, the projects that we do, whether they come out easily or well, or in a reasonable time frame. And you can't anticipate that. We don't have that crystal ball that tells us, hey, there's about to be some tragic things happen at your local quilt shop and it's going to completely derail this project. Or 
your really wonderful but difficult mother is going to take up all of your time for the next three weeks. No one can tell you that. No one could have told me that I was going to struggle with the fabric choices that I put together, the mixing and matching that, you know, <laughs> linen knit, not easy to work with on the curb. So in the end, I'm kind of glad we didn't do the quilt horror story or quilts gone bad because it's not the quilt. It's the person who is learning and being able to communicate that to the person who then is going to do the quilting. And so I've learned so much. I almost felt like after that process, I needed to do a video on how to be a good long arm, how to be a good custom long arm quilting client. And, you know, now I know I need to communicate what I want. If I don't know what I want, I probably need to figure that out before I commission work. If I don't understand the process, I probably should ask some good questions. <laughs> like, for example, I want this to have a square right in the middle of the quilt. Is that possible? <laughs> and so that is, that's kind of the moral of the story. Uh, I'm getting ready to hand off another quilt to him um, as soon as possible. I've been actually trimming threads on the back of this quilt top. It's killing me. But what I came away with is it's a partnership. The piecing quilt top person and the long arm quilt person. It is really a creative collaboration and partnership. And all good collaborations and partnerships, there's room for mistakes. There's room for differences. Communication is probably the most important thing. And kind of being willing to learn what you don't know and be malleable. And then I think the long arm person, um, which I now have worked with more than just my friend, um, they have to be willing to go, oh, okay, this wasn't what this person was looking for. Let's, let's problem solve that. And I'm very thankful that the quilt is done. I'm pleased with it now. And I hope that my friend is pleased with it too. And it has no home. So I don't know if this will become a future giveaway or if it will get turned over to someone just for their, you know, enjoyment. Not real sure how that's going to go, but that is, the, <laughs> that is the cup away quilt story. I want to make another one now that I kind of know what I'm doing at least a little bit more. I don't know that I even want to say I know what I'm doing. Um, I probably will involve the colorist a little bit earlier before I get married to a fabric um, so that that way we can do the two-tone that's intended. Thank God learning is my favorite because whew, the learning curve on this one was high and hard. But here I am sitting on my couch talking about it with this really pretty quilt beside me. And if that is not the nature of creative making, some projects just don't go the way that you think they will. And sometimes we don't like the results and we have decisions to make about whether we make changes to get what we want or if we leave it or walk away from it. And in this case, I stuck with it and together we made something that I'm really pleased with and now proud of. And I think that's the value in staying with it and learning and making what we want to make. So I hope this is encouraging to you for many reasons, especially if you have a project that goes awry and you're not happy with it, or if you're just still learning, if you're new to quilting, we're all learning. Every quilt is an opportunity to learn something about quilting and learn something about yourself. I'm Kathy Martin. This is the Catbird Quilts. Thank you so much for watching. <music>